Greetings everyone, I am Western Angel M and today I'm going to open up this package that I got here today. This package contains his eight Dizzy Pixar cars, seven of them being die casts. So already have to say about so without further ado, let's crack it open. And here are all the cars out of the packaging. Now, some of these are replacements, or well, basically half of the slot is replacements. Like these three here and the TJ are replacements. But the other half are brand new cars. So, let's get into the brand new ones first, I'd say. Starting with this Quick Changer is Nigel Gearsley. And I got this because. Due to this being quick change, it can go from basically a regular Nigel Gearsley to there you go to a damaged Nigel Gearsley. The focus, there we go. You can see right there. Yeah, I really like this because we never got a damaged Nigel Gearsley diecast. Same thing with Flower with Saru, who I've had for a little while. So yeah, I really like these two quick changes in general. So these two are my personal favorites from the quick changer line. So I'm glad to finally have both of these. Next up we have this little Guido right here. And the main reason I got this Guido is because I initially thought that this was the one that came in the Fireball Beach 4 pack. But it wasn't. The Guido in that pack is different. I'm not entirely sure which Guido model this is specifically. And I'm also more of that Guido because in the slot is of course a Sandy Cruz Ramirez. And I've already had a Sandy Rusty's Racing Center Lightning McQueen. And I was originally gonna get the Luigi as well, which have come from that four pack in the slot, but yeah, the seller can't find it sadly. So I couldn't get that Luigi. But hey, at least now I no longer have to waste my time looking at all sorts of Cruz Ramirez as trying to determine if it is the Sandy version or not. But you can determine it relatively easily because the Sandy Cruz has thinner eyelashes for some reason. I mean it's odd but hey, at least it makes identifying the two easier. Boy. And the last brand new release for me is Leroy Hemming. This was of course that one rookie in Cars 3 during that one flashback. And he was Doc's main competitor essentially. I Doc did the flip around him. Yeah, I waited for the longest time to finally get the 155 scale version of Leroy Hemming because I've had the mini race for quite a while. So it was about time that I finally got the 155 scale version of him as well. Now we're getting to the boring ones. Well, and I got this TJ because I mean it's kind of rare-ish. I don't know, he appeared to be in better condition than mine, but yeah, I'm not too sold about it. Now that I got him in hand, I actually think he might be a bit worse than the one I've had so far. Yeah, I think it was kind of pointless to buy this. Oh well. Next we got two crew chiefs from Cars 1. We got Senior Tracks and Ernest B. Rakes. I've had both of these dudes before. However, they are in much worse condition and both of which are missing the little microphone piece on the front. That's why I got these two, because both of them have the microphone in the front. Yeah, they are in much better condition than the ones I've had before. I mean, there's a little bit of damage on the back for Ernest, 
but in general they are in pretty good condition actually. So I'm glad to have these two replacements. And the last one is a replacement damage king. Now funny thing is I actually have three damage kings in total currently. I have the Antiquita one which I've had for quite a while. This is the very first damage king that I've gotten. And I also have this other non antiquated damage king which is in pretty poor condition. Just look all around and there's a bunch of chips in the front, on the side, on the back as well. Just, that's just terrible. On the other side too. I mean I know that he's the damage version but like still. Yeah he's in pretty poor condition. Oh yeah this one it appears to be in relatively good condition. That is besides the fact that his spoiler is a bit chewed up. Yeah, I did not notice that when I was looking at the listing. Silly old me. You can see his spoiler is a bit chewed up. I guess the dog got to him or something. Yeah, in general he appears to be in relatively good condition. And yet, just like the particular one, this wheel here doesn't really like to touch the ground. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that the Damage King is designed in a way that this wheel here doesn't touch the ground, because neither the lenticular one, or this one here that's in nice condition, touch the ground, whereas this one here, because it's in pretty bad shape, touches it quite well. That's probably because the axles are a bit bent. So yeah. To some degree, the Damage King is basically a dysfunctional diecast because not all four of its wheels can touch the ground properly. If it touches it, then the back wheel here doesn't touch the ground. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about. The last thing that I want to mention of these Damage Kings is that due to the fact that every single copy is hand painted, as in the dirt detailing only, like the decals such as the Dynaco logo and numbers and such are all identical on all models. However, the dirt detailing differs on every single copy of it. Which you can very clearly see, I mean the dirt detailing on these two regular ones is relatively similar. Put this to the side. You can see, I mean, it's rather similar between the two, but you can still see that it's different. On the side here you can see it's a bit more dirty on this one. There's more dirt up there. And the back seems to be identical between the two. On this side I think this one has a bit more dirt. But yeah, I mean it's relatively similar between these two models. However, I'm comparing it to the Antiquator one, it's a completely different story. I mean the Antiquator one has a pretty good amount of dirt on the spoiler, but then just Throughout the rest of the body is just small little smudges all over the place. It's interesting. And besides Damage King, the only Dizzy Pixel cause diecast that I know, where basically every single copy is technically different because they are hand painted to some degree, are the burnt and soaked Lightning McQueens, as in the burn marks on them. I don't know any other diecasts that are like this, but if you all know that there are other diecasts besides these three, which differ on every single model, then make sure to write it in the comments. Although I'm not entirely sure, but I think that every single copy of the Thailand variant of Damage King looks identical, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this unboxing of mine, and I'll make sure to see you all next time. Goodbye.